Hey, good evening, good evening, Skype Flat Stories. Trust you guys. Oh, wow, hope it goes good with you. Let's make my camera properly here. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. I've got a member of parliament with me tonight, Faiz Jacobs. Faiz um, is, is not a stranger to this platform. He's been on here several times. And I've invited him, you know, to come and join us and maybe, you know, tell us more about what national government are planning. Um, I know many of you guys are very much... Um, fascinated and interested uh, in the in the BRICS um, you know uh, um, summit and you guys want want to know more about that and you know for is the right person to, to give us some more information so with any further ado let me welcome for is good evenings for is and welcome to Cape Flood Stories. Uh, greetings greetings Stanley and uh, to all the listeners uh, of Cape Flood uh, Stories to visit Huyanant uh, and salam alaikum to everybody on the platform. Mm -hmm. I haven't been on the platform for quite a while, but I always thought. Thank you for the joining stories. us, Faiz. Yeah. Faiz, um, is a brief. Yes, I know. I, I know, definitely, definitely. I always see your comments, I always see your shares. So thank you for following us. Faiz, Brick says, put South Africa in the spotlight for many things. And um, whenever I watch overseas news, in the, um, international news, I always see people speak about South Africa. You know, uh, BRICS has given us a platform um, to talk about, you know, South Africa and what we have to offer. Give us more information into the BRICS because that's means what is the BRICS um, or what was the summit all about and what is BRICS? What can it, you know, what is the benefits to having BRICS um, or be a BRICS partner. Yeah, um, Stanley, I think it's by exciting that also South Africa part is from, from BRICS. Um, so BRICS stand for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So as a partnership um, from these five countries, um, it started in 2010 already. Um, so these countries came together and it was normally the global south. And uh, we, we started to meet with each other. And then we said, look, we need to, to form a cooperative arrangement of mutual benefit for ourselves. So uh, last week, um, I was fortunate to, to represent uh, uh, us there at the, at the BRICS summit. It was in Santon. Uh, it was a, a, a very vibrant, I mean, uh, three days of meetings, 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 talk shops. Um, and also the key things that uh, was was the resolve was um, a lot of good deals for us. I mean, just off the record, I'm sure the news broke it, but uh, um, we added another six members to the BRICS uh, uh, family. So BRICS is a, um, and also for us in South Africa, uh, there was multi agreements between China. China's agreed to, to offer us um, energy equipment, uh, solar panels, uh, generators um, uh, to a big value. I, I'll share that that stats. But I mean, for us as South Africans, we ask the question: What is the what is the benefit for us as South Africans being in uh, in, in in the BRICS? So, as South Africa, even though we quite a, a smaller uh, economy, if you compare us with China, Russia, uh, India, and and Brazil, and 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 um, um, and yeah, and and Russia, um, it gives us access and influence above outstanding. So almost we as South Africans are leading uh, an important emerging economy. Um, it also tells us that uh, we also have uh, direct access to the new National Development Bank. So in the past oh, there was only the 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 World Bank and the IMF, but BRICS membership is giving us for access to funding and infrastructure report, uh, support on the on, on the national uh, bank um you know BRICS also helped us during the COVID uh, pandemic because it was the BRICS countries that worked together and helped uh, we got the vaccines for relatively free where other african countries didn't get the vaccine um our partnerships is is is, is bringing a lot of opportunities um energy research uh um, even the data networks. Uh, so part of this thing is it's about being sharing, learning, opening up. I mean, there's a think tank. We had a business forum now. 
So now we can trade with these countries and they are big markets. And so uh, as the Chinese say, uh, Lasuk, uh, um, Lamuna, um, then uh, they're looking millions and millions of tons. That means that we as South Africans must get into that market. We must grow uh, uh, that. Or even beef, uh, Iran, for example, was saying to us, um, we're looking for halal meat in Iran now. And uh, we're asking our people, can we, can we deliver on all of these things? So what it means, we must go back to the drawing board as South Africans. We mustn't just think local, local. Or, you know, we must think at all the big opportunities. Even, even with the exchange programs, uh, the studying, our kids need to say that uh, we are part of a global world. Um, the energy crisis, um, now that we have BRICS, 80% of the oil companies, the oil uh, producing countries are in BRICS. So can you see there's also advantage now for us. Uh, hopefully that will ensure that we get oil um, and we secure our oil. The Iranians are talking about uh, uh, helping us with uh, the pipelines and the refineries um, uh, if we use their oil. Um, I think the, there's many challenges. I mean, the one thing is also uh, we're focusing also on, on women uh, empowerment in the BRICS. Uh, so we're also giving greater access to women opportunities. There's the BRICS Women's Business Alliance. Um, there's the Business Council. Uh, in every field, so whether it's energy, whether it's IT, even with uh, artificial intelligence, that is a committee, but of course it's made all the uh, different groups. And because we as South Africa were the, were the chairs of, of BRICS this time around, it came to, um, to, to South Africa. And so for those three days, we had uh, bilaterals with the Chinese, uh, bilaterals with the, the Russians, bilaterals with the, the, the Indians. Um, it, during that same period, the Indians, uh, we celebrated them because they landed on the moon, uh, for example. Um, and I think for us, um, it opens up a lot of new windows. And I think for me, it's about how do we ensure that our local communities get to access those economic uh, opportunities, uh, those, those markets, even with Africa also. We must stop seeing ourselves just as a, a, a year, an enclave here in Cape Town or Cape Flats, but we must see ourselves as part of a, a global south, and we must ensure that we take those opportunities with, with, with both hands. Um, I, I, I want to maybe make a... Uh, there was a declaration also by the president. Uh, let me just see if I can put that up. Uh, is it possible I can share that? Um, let me see. Yeah. So I think the, 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 the one on a political level, you know, being part of a, a group. In the past, the West used to dominate a lot of the, 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 the economy. United Nations is still controlled by uh, five permanent members. And there's no African... Uh, representative and we as South Africa want to be that representative on uh, on the U United Nations. We're also talking about we can't just have people go into another country and make war. Um, and the bully tactics historically from from the Americans and and the West um, is something that we're trying to break away. We need to have a world that uh, has mutual respect, uh, understanding, um, uh, solidarity, democracy. And inclusiveness and whatever growth there is it must be shared in collaborations with all of us um, and so i think BRICS represent us uh, opportunity where we can talk to people people to people cooperation we can share cultural and financial uh, partnerships um, and we also want to promote peace and um, so uh, this block can also ensure that we we condemn terrorism wherever it finds itself we we want to have fairer trade so the one big thing is the, we said now that we must trade in our local currency. You know, when we trade um, on the international market, we trade in dollar. So one dollar is equal to 20 rands. So it's very expensive for South Africans to, to, to buy uh, commodities on the international market. But now the BRICS are saying, hey, why can't we trade with Kenya in their local currency? So then we ask them, what's the price of that thing in, in Kwacha, for example? Then 
it will give us an opportunity not to trade in dollars but in local currency so for example the the Botswana uh, currency is Pula so Botswana is just up our, our colleagues up in the north and we were the ran here but you know what because of the international markets everything had to do with dollar dollar exchange but now what we're saying why can't we go back to the old ways of trading well or say or trading as a local currencies and in that way we can also strengthen the value of the rand strengthen our products to strengthen our services so i think that's also one of the good things that came out of uh, out of BRICS. but i think um, our people must take an active interest also mention muti don't this just for the people up there any because you see we can start a local cape flats BRICS chapter and we can then uh, arrange uh, seminars with with the other parts of the country of BRICS and see what are the possibilities of working together um what's the possibilities of trading together uh, we 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 creating they call it virtual platforms the chinese you know unless you, they love our, our rooibos tea now um so they're saying to us uh, we want to import the rooibos tea and we want um, your products alu alu vera um they like the skin products so this markets for our people um and it, you know the chinese is a billion men so if if we have a, a a product that they want and we not with the oversay can you produce volumes and i think that's for us a key thing if we go into the markets are we going to be able to to push the volumes that means we need to organize ourselves better we need to get manufacturing we need to form cooperatives we need to uh, form uh, alliance with each other that means we must uh, get our house in order uh, to take these opportunities Then are you still there? I can unhand, but um, I thought maybe if you if you want me to just pause a bit and uh, engage with some of the issues. I'm still here for you. Yeah, yeah. No, not a problem. Here was a question from 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 a lady. I don't know if you yeah. saw it. Will the standard of living decrease due to the BRICS? Um, I think that's the question many people want answered. You know. Um, Will my life improve? Because if we kind of be now the forerunners for, um, you know, in the global um, economy, will this, you know, improve the petrol price? Because obviously, you know, there will be better ne negotiation uh, um, activities place, um, taking place now because we're not going to trade according to a Western standard anymore. We're going to trade according to... Stanley, are you there? I seem to have lost the uh... Stanley, um, I have a is I'm still here. My apologies. I don't know. We need bricks to give us better Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I lost you a little bit there, but I got the gist of the of the question. Um, about the quality of life uh, for for us as South Africa. Look, I think for us, mm -mm. Um, look, I think for us, um, you know, we always yeah. want part of part of um, us being in mm -mm. part of us being in the in the BRICS is for us to to negotiate a better deal for us as South Africans. So when 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 our president goes to these international meetings, our primary objective is. What's in it for South Africa? How are we going to benefit our people? How are we going to benefit our economy? How are we going to ensure that we 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 improve improve the quality of our lives? So, I think it's a good question. Um, you know, I think BRICS 
is going to be just an advantage for us because we're going to get preferential trade uh, 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 agreements. Um, we're going to improve our trade um, uh, um, import-export. So, for example, uh, we trade a lot. Uh, China is our biggest uh, trading partner. Um, and what we need to do is also trade more of our products. So, for example, um, um, people couldn't get uh, uh, the, 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 the wheat or the oil from Ukraine. Now our uh, farmers, our wheat farmers and our sunflower oil farmers and our canola farmers the oil are, from are Ukraine. boosting it. Now our uh, farmers, our wheat farmers are boosting it. Um, I think there was an echo. Can I continue? So, so the point I'm making about trade is it's gonna it's gonna benefit us. I mean, if if you have a trading partner that is one of the biggest oil producing, so Saudi, for example, Saudi uh, Saudi um, Arabia is now part of the BRICS. Um, we are hoping that we can negotiate a better Hajj deal for us, for example, uh, because even though we got a small Muslim population. The fact that we are trading partners with the Saudis now, we I'm sure we we, we could increase the, our Hajj visas or get um, a freer or more visas. That's just one example. Then um, our partnership with um, with Iran, for example, it's a big oil producing uh, country. Uh, they've got infrastructure. Um, we're going to find oil and gas um, on our coast now. You know, if you have that security, energy security, then you can build up the fact that China is going to help us with our our energy, our, our load shedding. Hopefully, by the end of of this year, um, we'll we'll be able to to say load shedding will be a thing of the past. So I am what we're doing now is, and obviously they want their portion of of trade. So nothing is for nothing, but I think what we stand to now is that there are all these opportunities. I think the big challenge for us is how do we get our young people ready? Is our people, our young people ready to go work in Saudi or go learn in uh, in Russia or uh, go to India to to be part of the the IT hub? Because now we will have exchange programs. Now we will say, okay, uh, give us opportunities to study in the best universities in India. Um, India's technology. And ICT is also great. So I think there's going to be opportunities for cultural exchanges. We're also going to get lots of tourism, for example. Tourism is going to be a big um, a big boost. Um, can you imagine uh, tourism come in uh, great opportunities for us? The, the Brazil uh, president said he wants a direct flight from Cape Town to, to Sao Paulo. Now um, we're going to have direct flights to Brazil. So in the past, you had to travel through Afri uh, through Europe to go to, to, to Brazil. Now we're going to get a direct flight. There's going to be more jobs opportunities um, that's being created, more tourism that's going to be created in, 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 in these opportunities. Yeah. Is there any other further questions? Um, Far is just, just a question that I have for you. Mm. Um, you you also get the people. Oh. Yeah, they, there's nothing now on the screen, but 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 I get it on my WhatsApp now. I'm actually getting a few um, questions where people are asking, "What is the disadvantage? Is what if we don't work with the other countries? What if we don't bring a part as a country? What if uh, corruption, you know, takes takes over here? Um, you know, will we will, will South Africa will will they be able to deliver? what they have promised the rest of the world because we're playing now not anymore in the small league i think we're playing now in the big league well i think that's a that's a very important question that's a very important question um stanley um <clears throat> we need to definitely up our game uh as south africans because you're right, we're now no longer playing in the in the small league. We're playing in the big league. So 
we need to ensure that there's clean governance we need to ensure that there's the rule of law and we need to ensure that we we create opportunities for our people um you see we can't continue um when we do these partnerships so stanley i was saying that um definitely it's a good question we need to up our game we now in the in the big league so to say mm -hmm. so we, we must we must yeah. build um, our capacity uh, we must build our skills um and yes we must deal with the issues of corruption but i think um <clears throat> corruption um is everywhere and i think what we need to do is we need to ensure that we minimize we 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 deal with the consequences of corruption um but also cascade the opportunities down to all our people so for example uh if we need to now get um uh clothing opportunities how do we organize our different areas because that's that's what is required now we have a lot of manpower but what we need is how do you ensure if there's a need for this product or commodity how do we take advantage how do we say to people let's organize ourselves better and and i think it's a it's a wake up call for all of our uh, uh south africans um how can we ensure that we we get these opportunities i see uh, uh mr zakia simon saying he's a, he has honors in uh, in public admin and uh, will will we create opportunities i think i think a lot of our people now are looking at uh, applying their skills broadly if you are honors uh, um, and masters and post doctorate you've got advanced skills and i mean i think first prize is to get that skill uh, in south africa to see how we can use that skill um, and um, create opportunities here but i think we must and be close to the opportunities especially our young people of traveling of being deployed uh of saying okay that i don't know um and learn my, as much get the income and then come back and apply that skill so um i think what we need to do is we mustn't be fearful for the unknown you know a lot of the times fear holds us back you know uh we are complacent we comfortable in doing the same things all the time and so we we get the same results i think we as south africans we need to say hey there's these opportunities right. now how are we going to mm -hmm. be part of it how are we going to uh create these opportunities because you know the world is not going to give us this is not a welfare thing where uh <clears throat> it's a charity case what we as south africa we have a lot of minerals we have we have coal we have iron ore we have uh, platinum mm -hmm. and how do we ensure that we yeah. beneficiate these products we also got a lot of agriculture but i think what we need to jack mm -hmm. up is our tertiary um, our services sector yeah. like our it um, there's new technologies artificial intelligence how are we going to ensure that we have a collaboration that maybe mm -hmm. one of these companies can mm -hmm. set up a plant here a, a robotic plant or uh you know um india has the best uh medicine pharmaceuticals so part of the partnership might be that uh, they'll they'll do a joint partnership with us yeah and we'll set up a, a a chemical plant or a pharmaceutical plant so there's a lot of opportunities and i think what we need to do is streamline be part of the networks and i think uh, uh, i'm willing to facilitate that so if there's anything it comes through i'll always uh, pass it on to you stanley um that we can share with our people but i think what we need to do is just get ourselves ready um you know we can't we can't continue and our fight is not against america or europe we still um, america is still our big trading partner and we still provide but what we are saying now we can't just be um the booty boy mm. of other countries we 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 have a right to self determination to uh, own decision to explore others so 
or angry with someone I'm going to clean the I must be angry. Uh, high inflation, uh, tight global conditions, uh, trade that is fragmented, and uh, advanced economies are, are, are still benefiting, and there's increased vulnerabilities, especially with us in the global south. And so, so BRICS creates an opportunity for us for multilateral cooperation uh, to see how we can mitigate the risk, that how we can deal with trade, how do we ensure that we deal with hunger, uh, ensure sustainable development, ensure that we have access to energy, water, fuel, uh, fertilizers, and also mitigate the, the climate change. Um, I think that for us is also a key thing. Is the, yeah. Stanley, I, I, for, for I'm you experiencing you have in and out. Of... Yeah, I think it's the Wi-Fi. Faiz, you've mentioned something. I don't think people realize how much potential or how much countries like India have to offer. A lot of our corporate companies in South Africa make use of services of India, from, from India. I think India, you, you, you mentioned earlier IT and um, artificial inter intelligence. I think at the moment, a lot of people don't know, but India is one of the forerunners in that industry. And that can only mean, you know, benefits for us if those people come into our country and, you know, they are, are already here, they're already working with certain companies and I can't mention names for, for um, obvious reasons, but they are, they have the skills. Same with uh, uh, Brazil as well. There is uh, skills in, in these countries that can benefit our people. Even so young people can go and work. They may be on a permit for two years or, or three years, come back with a, with a wealth of knowledge. Um, I think that is the benefits of the whole BRICS um, thing. We need to look at it much more bigger, you know. But I want to just, just go somewhere else quickly with you. These people, I don't know if you saw, and, and I just need to change the, the conversation um, a little bit. The Moonshot Pack, I don't know if you're familiar with the Moonshot Pack. You would obviously know um, something that was started recently by, um, you know, a few opposition parties to unseat the ANC. What do you think um, for is will this you know bring to the party? What will this what you know unseating the ANC in a transaction like this can you know can can mean going back to the old ways? You know, what do you think of the moonshot pack? How will this impact or won't it ever impact? Um, Sir Ramaphosa said our president said a few days ago, this is nothing but a side show. So I would like to hear from, from you, will this have an impact on um, 2024? Look, I think for, from outside, I share the president's view that um, if the ANC get our house in order, and if we bring all our family members, the long lost love families, bring colors, uh, Indians, whites, everybody's on the ice, and those mark accommodation for us, Amal, and we fight in the house and we ensure that all of us see ourselves in this non-racial movement, then we won't have these problems. I think for us, um, the moonshot is a desperate attempt by the DA to get all of these small white parties and these uh, black lackeys um, to try to get a 50% uh, 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 vote. Now, at best, the DA has reached their ceiling of about uh, 20%. I don't even think they will get 20% this time around at the national elections. Um, there's a strong possibility that EFF might be the, the new, um, the new uh, official opposition. Um, I think what we need to talk rather is a government of national unity. And uh, I use the term that, uh, that uh, Mandela used. Um, Mandela, when uh, we started out in 1994, we talked about a government of national unity. So we need to ensure that all the big parties that have uh, representation 
is accommodated in a, a government of national unity. But I think for us, the, um, the ANC, we are always pushing uh, uh, to get 50% uh, uh, at the national level. But I think what we need to do is maybe we should do a moonshot par, um, alliance here in the Western Cape because uh, people gave the DA uh, a majority here in the Western Cape and Cape Town for a long time. Uh, I think they've become arrogant. They've become arrogant and they um, are abusing our people's patience and abusing our people's heartedness. So uh, if, if anything, I argue that there must be a moonshot part uh, alliance here in Cape Town and Western Cape to get rid of the DA because they have been the majority party here and they are krachtada, they're arrogant, they're not listening to the people anymore. Um, they, they lie openly, um, they chop and change and they bring in all these unconstitutional bylaws um, that doesn't, they're not listening to our people. I mean, I went to the march on Saturday. It was very clear that even though there was all the parties that may, may not uh, agree, but one thing that we did agree on as Capetonians, that this unaffordable rights must go. The electricity must go. Um, you know, in this high, in this high difficulty of, of, of rights, uh, there was aunties and women that spoke very passionately about what the city does. The city has more than 8 billion rand in, uh, in revenue. So it's got a surplus. It's run like a bank. Uh, and it's supposed to provide indigent uh, poor relief. It's part of the ANC national policy that um, if you pension, if you're old, if, you, if you're not working, you must get certain amount of kiloliters of water and certain amount of kilowatts of uh, energy free. But instead of providing a basic net for the poor, the city is so heartless and, 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 and cold. I mean, the, the aunties that say that uh, um, they have to go beg for a, 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 a kettle of water. Um, and what they do, if you buy a 10 rands electricity, they only give you two or three rands units and they, and they deduct the debt. That is unconstitutional. Um, you're not allowed. If, if I buy by the shop and I buy a, 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 a commodity, you're not allowed to automatically deduct uh, uh, from, from, from electricity. And that's what the city is, is doing. So I believe um, that uh, we need a moonshot, we need an alliance here in the Western Cape and Cape Town to get rid of the DA. The, the DA has been ruling here for, for more than 10 years and um, nothing is improving. Uh, the every day they focus on white um, farm murders, which is important, but they don't focus on the, the safety and security of the Cape Flats. Um, they focus on um, on maintaining the privilege that is. But look look at even the the, 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 the taxi the taxi violence that all could be avoided. Um, what had happened is that J P Smith that he think he has a private army here, and then he's trying to uh, create the them and us divide and rule. The the law was very clear that they didn't have powers to impound. Now the Constitutional Court, they're going to the Constitutional Court to instruct them to, 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 to find a way. So they have to save face on this. So I'm calling for, for, for local Capetonians, even if you don't want to be part of the ANC family. The ANC family is a broad church. Uh, there's things that we're correcting. There's uh, uh, under the ANC's leadership of uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. You'll see now things are getting better. Um, we, we've got uh, inflation is being brought down. Um, so gradually, gradually, slowly, slowly at the national level, things are improving. Um, that is my view. Uh, this moonshot of, of, of Stiernazen is a desperate attempt. Um, they think that uh, people are stupid um, to think that uh, uh, if you just put mm. a few um, black faces around um, and identity politics there, we must deal with the real issues. And the real issues is that the ANC can provide that, that prosperity right. for all of our people. And, you know, identity politics is important. Um, you can't just say that I'm, I'm a colored and what about me and not think mm. about what about the others. We need, we need to find a way where we can live mm. in harmony and coexist. 
um, and not have the them and us. You know, uh, apartheid and the DA has been good at dividing our people. Um, creating, we, we, our fear has been mobilized to hate each other, to to have um, the them and us, the swat khafar. You know, uh, I, I know uh, fellow Cape Townians that suffer the same difficulty that colored communities on the Cape Flat suffer. And we need to promote solidarity. That's why I like this thing now uh, in the council when the EFF did their silent protest, all of the people um, uh, stood there and said, that, but what is what they did was wrong. So Cape Townians, all of us need mm. to be seen. Cape Townians, all of us need to be heard. There's no second class Cape Townian mm. or third Cape Town. And colored people must stop being used by the DA uh, to, mm. to perpetuate their fears. The ANC has not been in power here in the Western Cape or a uh, city of Cape Town for for 15 years, but we still get blamed for everything. We still get blamed. So, so for example, electricity. It's very clear the mm. the national norm for electricity is 15 yeah. percent. Uh, a nurse, there's a regulation. All the other metros are not charging that rate. Here in the city, they say no. They they they, they can do their own thing. Um, here in the city, um, they can impound at will. Here in the city, um, you, you have this bylaws that can take people away. Informal traders can be removed willy-nilly. Homeless can be fined 500 rand. Uh, it's, it's crazy here. And so therefore, I'm arguing that uh, we as Capetonians need to get rid of the DA through a moonshot uh, alliance. We vote for everybody except the DA. Faiz, you have not touched quickly on the on the taxi strike and and the bylaws. Um, it was a very sensitive matter, and and that, that, that is something that I didn't want to be actually part of. But I was catch in that um, moment. Um, there's a lot of things going around. Everybody has their point of view and how it should have been done. But from a member of parliament, I f I think that national government should have stepped in. Um, and sort of, you know, handled the situation. Um, I think that, um, you know, people died, you know, in that in that one week, people died. Some people lost their jobs. It is much more difficult, you know, than what it seemed like on TV. Um, how can we avoid this? Because at the end of the day, you know, a lot of things like, you know, crime on the Cape Flats always gets referred to as a national problem. Um, we have had this conversation several times with J.P. Smith and with members of, of, the, um, of the DA or the city of Cape Town. How, how can we, what can we expect from national government? How will national government step in? Because at the end of the day, people are dying and local government is saying, but everything, you know, building schools, um, you know, SAPS, is, um, ESCOM and things like that, it's all national government. How do we take that back? Um, how, how do we ask government to step in, national government to step in, show to us that you guys didn't forget about us because people are dying every day on the Cape Flats. And this one is blaming that one, but we're calling out, we are not worried about politics. Sadly, I got the gist of your, your, your question. Um, what can we do differently? Um, uh, this, look, the strike was very unfortunate. And it put us at a, for eight days, uh, we were all living in fear. And this was so unnecessary and avoidable. If the, if the DA just wanted to, to, to get people to talk. Now, you know, we as the ANC, we'd want more national intervention. Now, uh, because the DA is so arrogant, they, they want to take us to court, for example. Because when the national minister said that the laws, JP first lied and the mayor first lied and said that this was the implementing national laws to impound. When the national minister said to them, but look, these laws are not, uh, these you're implementing bylaws, then they quickly changed around. So they chop and change. I think they have this master the eyes of the uh, art of deception and lies. Um, on the on the electricity, on the crime, you know, and even on housing, every year the DA city Cape, of Cape Town um, don't spend two billion rand of housing money that 
is given to them from, from national. So we work in a system where national, we in parliament, we sign off and we say, okay, Western Cape government, here's your two billion for housing, RDP houses, um, city, you going to spend it. Then they don't spend it. But if if this DA had, they, they have the capacity, but they don't have the political will to help us on the Cape Flats. Imagine this taxi industry was white. Just put the, the, the turn the tables. Imagine this was, uh, th this is the only industry that is not white. The black is colored and African communities. And they came up. I mean, I know uh, uh, Auntie Farida, who's a, a taxi driver in Belha. She's, she's got the three or four taxis uh, for the last um, 20 odd years. And she took two or three of us of her kids through university for, with, with that taxi. So it's a, it's, you can't just have this thing that all taxi owners are criminals, therefore we must deal with them. You know, they krach dadigheid van die DA. Um, and some, some of us, um, better colors, feel that uh, it's good to deal with them. It's also our own internal uh, ra racism. We, we must condemn that because that krach dadigheid, you know, when you have to protect your livelihood, then the criminal elements is going to come in. So it's unfortunate. I mean, the crime on the Cape Flats could have been dealt with if you had a political will by this administration. They want national police to be controlled. They've got Bambanani. They get all the budget. They are in charge of the police. The MEC for, for safety and security is in charge of the police. But because it's not their communities, because they don't live on the Cape Flats, because it's not their brothers and sisters that's involved. I love, I love viewers. Yalla kan maar yalla kan sê af uit rooi man. As, as net kallets. Um, yalla kan maar kan freks kiet elke weekend. Because they don't really care about our people. If that was in Sea Point or if that was on, 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 on the, in the more affluent areas, they would have made intervention. For the last 15 years, the Cape Flats hasn't been safe. Now you can't, you can't say it's a, a, a police problem. It is a political will of this government's problem. Because, you know, they're supposed to be to put lights and street lighting and social economic conditions of our people in. Um, they haven't dealt with it. Ali, the drug dens, they're not prepared to deal with it. So the problem is Cape Townians must wake up. You can't vote for the DA and then say ANC must intervene. You can't vote for keeping these people in power and them using your vote, but then you want to blame the ANC for non-delivery. And it's wrong. The ANC is not in power here in the set. Our, our ANC councillors is in the minority. We voted against the bylaws of all of these things, but the DA has an overriding majority. That's why they're arrogant. They don't listen to our people. That's why the people must decide. Now, we, uh, as a member of parliament, my job is to do oversight. I can't instruct uh, the laws of our country says that the mayor must govern, but they must work in cooperation. If I can have my way, we, we should have a more national-driven agenda. The national department, you see what happens, national departments give money to the province, and they are the implementation agent, and municipalities are the implementation. So, for example, the health. Mm. Uh, fortunately, in, in the Western Cape, we inherited a good health system. The money gets uh, spent uh, from, mm. from national and it's working well because we, we put in the systems here. Um, where national is working well, the DA claims the credit, but where they are not delivering on housing, on water, on sanitation, on, 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 on electricity, they're saying they're blaming the, the Western Cape. I think just as, let me just say, man, the ANC is making space for colored communities. But I'm also asking for for colored communities to lend us your vote. Give us your support. Become ANC members. Be part of the family. You know, why is it so difficult when ANC branches in the rural areas of George or all the different areas is flooded with colored people because they understand Basque. They understand in the West Coast, they, 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 they mobilize together with the African brothers and sisters and they don't see themselves different, better or less because they see themselves, we need to work together in solidarity. And that's what we need in Cape Town. We need Cape Townians to unite. We need Cape Towns to, to wake up. Um, we need Cape Townians to say, look, we've given the DA so much uh, uh, chance 
but clearly they're not delivering on, on these things. And maybe we must form together. So we are saying we must form a broader coalition here in the Western Cape and Cape Town to get rid of the DA. Stanley, let me uh, pause is there. this is something that I want to actually mention and, and that we have to be honest also about? Um, and I have to say this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Continue. So if I is, um, I just want to, I just want to mention something, you know, that I think we need to be honest about. Um, this, this is the best run city, but I have to, I have to say it isn't. If you go into your piece of labors, and I'm not saying this now to get any attention from anybody, but if you go into piece of labors, the sewage pipes are running there, you know, for weeks, for months. There, there's, there's portals there. If you go into Delft, the sewage pipes are bursting there. Um, you know, I understand there is certain elements also that that place to it. But, you know, when you are, when you live in an area like Musenberg or you live in an area like um, Constantia and you call, you know, your, 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 your drainage block, you get immediate attention. They, they will come to you immediately. I've seen it. But once you live, even here where I live, our, our, our drains here is, we, is, is weekly blocked and we have given it to our to our ward councillor. All the neighbours has done so. And I have seen sometimes you have to wait a week or two weeks before they come out to you. I have to say this. Service delivery is not the same year than what, is it, than what it is on the other side of the mountain. However, Faiz, I also feel this could have been avoided if the ANC that we at that time trust with, with our vote took ownership and didn't disappoint us because we trusted the ANC. I was proud to give the ANC my first vote. And, and for that, I don't care what, what people say. It was my first vote. I was young. I wanted to vote for a movement that will be there for the people. But unfortunately, you and I know, and we have this conversation always, we were, we were disappointed. However, the next five years, what can the ANC um, promise us? Can we change the situation? Because you were Saturday, you were at the um, at the march. Our people are paying a lot of money for electricity. You need to have four jobs, four jobs. I have to have a, a job. My partner has to, has to have a job. And after hours, we have to work just to keep afloat, just to buy electricity, just to buy the, to pay the, the the bills. Things are quite expensive in Cape Town. Can that things change? You know, with all this. Um, partnerships across the world coming to the shores now. Can there be a better South Africa, the one that was promised to us in the next five years? Look, I believe that the ANC is part of the solution. I believe that, uh, uh, yes, we disappointed our people. Um, there was a period where it wasn't fashionable to be an ANC member. Uh, I remained an ANC member through all the difficult times. Um, um, and even my own family was saying to me, um, you need to get your house in order. Now, look, under the civil leadership, um, we've made significant progress. Now, when we go into the next elections, now we're going to do an election review. Now, for us, the primary objective is that we need a people's contract. We need to, we need to first listen to our people. We need to hear what our people are saying. And our people must entrust a, for, for the next five years good representatives. Now, for me, um, I'm saying that even if we don't vote, all of us vote for the ANC. I think what we need to do is get capable, competent people, that's your public reps, keep them accountable, ensure that they have the political will to serve you. You know, a lot of these colored councillors on the Cape Flats, uh, they might be competent, but they don't have, they can't go against their, their masters. They can't make changes. They can't deal with fundamental issues. And they themselves admit, I mean, I was in Mannenberg the other day um, and the aunties were complaining there's a field with, with filth, with dirt, and that's been there for almost three or four weeks already now. And every time I phone uh, Aslam or the local councillor or, or, or whoever, they say, no, it's too dangerous. We can't come into Mannenberg. Uh, we can't bring uh, trucks in there. Now, I think... We, we can't have differentiated uh, support. Look, we need to ensure now the way the system is here in the Western Cape is the ANC only got, I think, 30% of the votes. But 
it represented a lot of the African votes that didn't get an opportunity to have their voices heard in council. And I think for us, in the next round of elections, people must look at the ANC's track record now. We must look at what we stand for. We are the organization that still provides the basic income grant. We want to ensure that uh, uh, we provide a basic pension for the aged. It's the DA that blocks this in parliament. They vote against uh, the basic um, um, uh, uh, poverty alleviation products because that's not their constituency. So I think for us, uh, we will share our election manifesto, but we have the political will. You know, if you are Cape Townian and you are from the Cape Flats, you see the hardship. I was at that march. I was so proud of our people on the anti speaking. Uh, 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 um, what's the name? Vanessa van Heidefeld had said that these people are acting like thieves because even though you have so much money in the bank, mm. eight, 8 billion rand, uh, to write off, to just give us a little bit of uh, uh, concession from 18% to 15%, it's only going to cost you a few million rands uh, in your coffers. And it will give a relief to us, especially the poor, but all working uh, Captonians. And the mayor has it within his power to do that. But guess what? He's going to be he's very arrogant. He says, no. Um, because it's in his interest to create profit and generate profit. They don't have the political will to care and to listen and to consider the poor. But the ANC, it's in our DNA. And it's in our DNA to serve our people. It's in our DNA to care for a broad range. You know, we, we, we can't have the them and us. We can't have the fear factor anymore. You know, I wish um, in the next round, when we, when we vote, we look at our candidates, um, people vote. But also, more importantly, for me, there's so much quality, colored community leaders, uh, African community leaders on the Cape Flats. And we want them all to be part of, of, of the ANC family or at least have a coalition or a, a form a progressive alliance because we can't do it alone. The president said, send me to Mamina. We must all contribute. And you know... This South Africa belongs to all of us. Irrespective, now people come and go and they, and they vote. What we need to ensure is that we have a caring government here in the Western Cape. And especially do the things that those that have been historically disadvantaged. How, how do you not spend 2 billion rand for the people that has no housing here? There's more than 100,000 uh, uh, Cape Townians not having houses. How do you not spend infrastructure when there's 150 informal areas and, 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 and backyards in our country? There's, there's so much need. What we need to do is come together as, as Capetonians and say, how do we solve this? Uh, if, 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 if we were the mayor or if we had uh, be, be the premier, we'll call our people together and we'll say, look, help us find solutions. Now, they are very minimalist. Um, they're not in a, the business of caring, in the business of dealing with the, the legacies of apartheid. I mean, even with 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 uh, with rehab centers, you know, we 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 should actually uh, create more jobs by having rehab centers. We need to give, you know, the this thing about drugs. I, I think I raised it already. It was apartheid that brought, brought mandrax in the seventies, eighties. So that's why the coloured community is cursed by being drugged. And 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 haruk and hasip mm -hmm. most of the times mm -hmm. that paid us with the dope salsal on the farms. So we we are cursed um, by by that. And how do we get our people out of that? Uh, is 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 the next call. So um, I think uh, Captonians must be uh, open. Um, we must mustn't allow that the fears that we have. Look, it's right to have fears, but you know, it's 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 bad when people manipulate your fears. To get what they want, you know this thing about they, they call the the, the 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 dog whistler. When when they, when when they see when they say okay now people are coming over from Chicago to take over your homes there in Colorado. Uh, it's agent provocateurs. It's it's criminal elements, but then automatically that fear brings out the worst racism of our colored communities, and then we go 
and retaliate. It brings us a worst. The scarce competition mustn't bring out the worst. It must be able to bring us together. It must be able to create solidarity with, uh, with our fellow Keptonians. Hi, Faiz. I'm back. Sorry, man. Faiz, I just want to leave you with the last question that I have. Um, you know, the future of South Africa, you've, you've been in politics for a very long time, and I know for a fact you are a Cape Fridge boy. Um, you know, we have, like you mentioned now, drugs, uh, alcohol, still have, has an effect on our communities. Um, you know, we are still struggling. We, you know, job creation, I read, I see um, articles of people, of, of political parties saying we've created so many jobs, but yet you see people unemployed on the Cape Flats, many of young people. You know, um, from your side, you know, do you, do you, do you think that things will change? Um, you know, from, uh, no, not from a, from a political view, but from an individual side, from a, a young a person, not a youngster, a person from the Cape Flats, you think, do, you, do you think there is still hope for us? Because we've gone backwards in many things. We, we've gone backwards in um, job creation, backwards in our schools. We still have schools, um, systems where our children are 50 almost in the class. Um, you know, crime is out of control. Do you think there is a, a bright South, South Africa somewhere out there? No, there are days that I am also feel despondent and... Um, then I tell myself that tomorrow must be better than, than, than today. And we need, we have a lot of faith. Our people are believers and uh, hope is an important need because if you don't have hope, then a lot of communities is up in despair. A lot of the communities on the Cape Flats have given up, um, have a, a part of, um, a lot of our communities on the Cape Flats have given up and so, especially in those drug-infested communities, you see disintegration. You see families. You see uh, just mayhem and despair. And that's what drugs does to our communities. We kill ourselves. Uh, there's no family. There's no education. And no amount of state, no amount of um, politicians can change that. So I think we need a almost a moral regeneration, that our faith, start with our families you know um i'm a believer i believe in god i believe in allah but i also believe in the resilience of my people i believe in our, our, our people on the cape flats i believe that even though we came from slavery we came from um colonialism and we 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 we, 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 were, we were people that made things happen and even now through all our adversity you know, we can laugh, we can smile, we can be jolly. Even if we don't have money, even as a krach af, um, we, we, we are people that smile through all the difficulties. And that's why I won't betray our people. That's why I won't um, give up. Though there are times when, when you feel hey, our people are, are their worst enemy because they perpetuate, they reproduce their poverty. You know, one generation, they don't value education, uh, and then they blame government. Um, I have I have cousins that um, they don't stay in school. They 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 become unemployed. Um, so, coloured communities reproduce our poverty. In one generation, if you take all your government opportunities, if you take you stay in school, you matriculate, you get your NSFAS. Um, and then you graduate and then you start a job and then you can pay it forward. So that's how many communities, African communities do it. My father and, and my mother was garden boys and, and, and uh, petrol attendants. But because they, they believed in the value of faith and hard work, they, they got out. You know, there's still a, 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 a welfare handout mentality by colored communities. I mean, I, uh, I have family of myself that uh, every year there's teenage pregnancy. Every year there's a, there's the, there's the problem that my we we struggle because now we make too much children. Our kids don't go through matric. They don't get the NSFAS. They don't get the jobs. They don't get the opportunities. 
and then we blame we blame the government that fails. So I believe that we as government officials like us, we must try harder. Like I try I asked, hey people, why don't you apply for the for the for the loan to open up a business? Um if you start a small business and you maybe you got a welding setup, you can get a five percent loan, not for a car or for nice times, but for to start your business. And then you must pay the loan back. Guess what? Not a lot of our people are, are taking up this the, the loans. So Stanley, part of our work is to do advocacy. Part of our work is to work with communities and we must be accountable. Um, so even with BRICS now, uh, even with mm -hmm. BRICS now, I, I'm going to push quite hard that we, we, we set up a, a Cape Flats chapter and then we set up something with a Chinese setup or this or that. And we, we bring people together. I mean, I can facilitate that. So Stanley, in short, we must keep on keeping yeah. on. We must showing solidarity. What you do, you you show the positive yeah. Cape Flats, uh, because all yeah. of all, everybody thinks that we all are are hopeless and beyond despair. Yeah. Look, if if we don't, if we have given up on ourselves, why yeah. why should other people yeah. give up on? Uh, why should other people believe in us? I mean, if you look in the northern yeah. parts, in in Venda or Mpumalanga or Limpopo. Yeah. Their conditions is very bad, but those schools, um, those mud schools, those kids come up with matric exemptions. They get top marks. Poverty is not a, a defining feature. It's how you value yourself. And we need a, a almost an awakening, man. The colored people, we need an awakening of um, that you are mm -hmm. enough, that you are okay, that you can claim your space. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we, mm. we need to move away from blaming others or fearing others mm. or, or, or this. There's, there's a lot of good people that's worked hard. And so we must protect them. I mean, you work two jobs. I work two jobs. We, we, we work. I work a, a 15 day uh, a, a day, um, 15 hour mm. a, a, a day. And we, we work hard. Mm. And so we need to create the opportunities. Yeah. So I'm saying it's a partnership. We need to go mm. with the community leaders. I mean, a mm. community. We have good community leaders. I was so proud uh, of the march. Ordinary aunties was marching there. Uh, tell this the mayor we mm. need. We need something. They were pleading. Yes. The, um, we, I'm hoping that the mayor can. And I'm mm. also making this appeal, Mayor Gordon uh, Hill. Yeah. Um, if you have any decency, uh, listen to the people of of Cape Town and give them the reprieve mm. of the electricity. Um, and come down and listen to our community. Stop doing this marketing and gimmicking and, and telling us everything is okay. Whilst we know not everything is not okay. If you are a real leader, sit mm -hmm. with us. Listen to our local community mm -hmm. leaders and use the state resources. Use the city's resources. So if you want to solve uh, the problems of our Nova Park or Pargood or Meacher's Plain, don't tell us what we think uh, is the solution. Listen to us. Sit us down. And let us, even the IDP, Integrated Development Plan, even the Ward Plan, we don't know. You're supposed to have public participation. You, as a mayor and your councillor, are supposed to um, say this in this year, in the area of Strandfontein, these are the developments. But the people of Strandfontein were supposed to say, no, we don't want the zebra crossing there. We want the clinic there. And this money must be used in that way. So that is policy of the ANC. That's what we do in, in, in a public participation is a core thing. The people's contract is a core thing. That's what when, when Theresa Solomon was the mayor, uh, a city a mayor, I, I'm, I'm very close with Theresa Solomon now, but she was our first black um, colored mayor. Um, and she did that. She went to each of the townships, each of the areas and worked with our communities. And so my appeal to people is, Let's form partnerships. Let's work together. Um, let's see how we can uh, bring opportunities. But we must have faith, uh, Stanley. We must have hope. And we must help each other. But we must also tell each other where we're doing things wrong, where we're not uh, stepping up to the plate, where, right. we, 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 where we're still hiding behind our racism, where we're still hiding behind the fear, where we... Uh, we we want to make ourselves feel mm. better. 
uh, by looking down on others. And we must say to our, our people, let's take the opportunities. Mm. Keep our kids in school, man. And if I'm a father, That's right. be a father. Um, pay your pap geld and go see your child over the weekends and take your child and, and invest in our children, man. Because that's, that government can't do mm. that. Families must stand together mm. and we must help each other. Um, and you know, mm. sometimes we have this better colors. I can know her arrive, I can know he in Weinberg. And I don't care about my other family. When we must, that's how we must help build the solidarity. And I also think, yes, sometimes we, mm. we, we, we need the nice times to relieve ourselves mm. and, and that. But sometimes we also need to ensure that we are ready for the world of work. We, our kids know how the value of time management, of discipline, and that are the key things. Means uh, they're not going to, if they must choose a kid um, that's lumming in the sun there in a Nova Park whole day, or someone that is willing to take two buses and, and work for a little bit of money, they'll, they'll take someone else. You can't have job reservations. So um, that's my appeal. I, 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 it has lived for me, men, so we keep flats, but I'm also, I'm not going to, I'm not going to mm. sugarcoat things anymore. We must uh, uh, call a spade a spade, uh, put us there. Let me mm. pause there. Mm. Faiz, and you are so right. And, and sometimes when we call a spade a spade, we, 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 we get, um, you know, under fire, you know, people aren't happy when we're being honest, but you're 100% right. I think we also need to think two things for ourselves. How do we, you know, how do we, take ourselves from the slave land to the promised land. I think that that is our next chapter as people from the Cape Flats. And, and, and like you mentioned earlier on, we have so much potential amongst our people, so much clever people, people that can fix cars and rebuild cars, um, you know, electricity, they can work with electricity. People that taught themselves, we have so much skills amongst our people. And, and that can definitely, even our youngsters, you know, I speak a lot of times to our youngsters. We have a lot of youngsters that are, you know, that have, Faiz, thank you so much. The Wi-Fi is throwing me um, around. But thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, we have a lot of youngsters from the Cape Flats that are very much clued up, that have studied further, that has, you know, make a success of their lives. And we need to create more of those young people and individuals as well. But from my side, I want to say thank you to you for always joining me. Let's talk about that um, that thing you, you want to do about the next, the next Cape Flats Stories chapter um, versus BRICS. Maybe we can do something and get people involved, uh, you know, and, and help our community. Yeah, let's look, look. I also want to, um, I like the, uh, this idea of from slave to promised land. Uh, I'm trying to set up a, a, a case. Ladies and gentlemen, I do apologize. I think I just lost Faiz there now. Wi-Fi is bad here where I live um, and where Faiz live. But I'll keep you guys posted. Um, I think, you know what? A lot of you guys are worried. Who are we going to vote for next year? I'm in that same position. I don't know who I'm going to vote for. And, and I, like to, I like to talk to people. And also, 
I like to look at people who has worked with me over the last few few years. So I want to say thank you so much to you guys that has tuned in. Thank you so much for being part of this broadcast. Um, I think we got a lot of information regarding the BRICS, the BRICS system or the or the BRICS, um, you know, summit as well, what we, we can expect. So I want to say thank you to you guys and have an awesome evening. I'll see you to you guys soon again. Eh? Cheers.